Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over how I declicked and cinemodded a set of Nikon AIS vintage lenses. Now, before I get into the declicking process and how I actually cinemodded these lenses, I'd like to say that I'm not a lens technician or a professional. I just scoured the internet for a set of vintage lenses that I already knew I was happy with the look and I wanted to have a set for myself that I could use on my productions. Now, with that being said, there's actually services that offer this whole process if you just send them the lenses or even they'll get the lenses for you. When I was originally looking to do this, it was out of my budget and I knew that I could find the lenses myself and probably do this process as well. So the lens set that we're looking at today is of a 20 millimeter, 24, a 35, an 85, and a 55 millimeter lens. So this is what the original lens looks like in terms of the bayonet mount and what is on the lens. I already added a focus gear, which I got from followfocusgears.com. This is just a, a 3D printed gear that's press fit on. It's a very loose fit. And then it comes with, you can actually buy the, uh, Cine adapters for your matte box. So this steps up to the outer diameter and a inner diameter of common cinema filters and matte boxes. The mods that I'm actually gonna be doing in this video is I'm going to hard mount an EF adapter, then also de-click the lens. So I'm just gonna be going over the process on how to do it on this 50 millimeter lens. So the parts for the conversion are actually from Simmod. I'm gonna leave links in the description for everything that I used in this video to actually mod this set. And this is an EF adapter. The reason I'm converting it to EF is because it's a more of a universal mount when it comes to across all cameras. For Sony cameras, for Canon cameras, um, Ari, uh, Blackmagic, EF is kind of the standards as well as PL. And then I have the Ari mounts from E to EF. So this just made sense. And I can't really, you can't really buy anything that adapts it to anything else. You can do PL, but EF is kind of the way to go in terms of vintage SLR lenses. In this kit, you get like an adapter spacer ring and then the EF mount itself, as well as the mounting hardware. And in addition to the actual mounting hardware, I got this super secret grease, top secret. I was scouring the internet in terms of what grease I could get, because guarantee you could buy it from your local hardware store. Uh, and it was just very unclear what people use. Some people use silicone grease, some people use uh, lithium grease. And I know it's very common to get, and this is just a markup on it, but I just wanted to use what was right. And so I just bought it at the same store that I got all my uh, adapters from. So going over the experience of cinemodding these lenses before I actually dive into this one, it's really weird because you would expect all these lenses to have the same kind of mechanisms inside in terms of the aperture. But in all the lenses that I looked at from the 20 millimeter all the way up to the 85 millimeter, every lens was different. And the most difficult lens was actually this 35 millimeter. The way that the aperture ring works on this one is that it's physically connected to the aperture ring here via these two screws. And it was just really complicated and just a pain really to line everything up perfectly and to put it back together. Eventually I got it done, but it's just very weird to see that all these lenses, all they're some from the same lineup, they have different ways the aperture works. And this can be due to the actual focal lengths and all what they stop down to. So that's just a warning when you're looking at all these lenses. If you take one apart and you feel like that's really easy, the other ones might not be as, as easy as that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the Nikon bayonet adapter. I'm just gonna zoom this in a little bit. Uh, there's three screws here. Now, generally these screws have some sort of thread lock or glue attached to them. So you just have to be really careful that you don't strip the screws. So what people recommend doing is actually heating it up with a soldering iron for a few seconds, and as well as uh, just putting the screwdriver on and then lightly tapping it with a hammer or mallet. Uh, I just apply even pressure and then unscrew the screw. Nothing too complicated about that. And then what I like to have is, I was modding these lenses before I started the video, is I like to have a little parts bin for all the screws that came from the original lenses, as well as a parts bin for just the screws that I'm going to be adding on the lens. Okay, now that the three screws are taken out, this bayonet mount should just lift off. Now, like I said before, some of these lenses are very different, so 
On this actual bayonet mount, there's no spring that leads to the aperture. The aperture spring is built into this lens already. So you don't have to worry about finicking, like getting a hook under as some of these lenses have. So I'm just gonna put that to the side and I'm just gonna, I like to look at each lens that I take apart just to understand how it goes together and then just makes the process easier when you're putting it back together. So when you're taking apart the lens initially, just be very careful. So here you can see that the aperture, yeah, it slides, the aperture ring is right here. So this is the outer ring. And then there's a little pin here and then that slides against this cam like mechanism and then it activates the aperture spring. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close this aperture down to its lowest f-stop, sorry, highest f-stop and then I'm going to lift it off. And then what actually causes the clicking in the aperture ring, yes, you can see that. Uh, let me rotate it, sorry, this is backwards for me. There are these little bumps right along here. And then those bumps interact with this spring right here. So in this case, these are two flatheads and I'm just going to take those off. So what people generally do is you can take a scribe, this is not a scribe, and you can scribe that in case that you want to put this back together. I know a lot of people do that in case you want to resell these lenses as click, but I know these are lenses are going to live with me for a while and then I'm going to resell them as video lenses anyway. So I'm going to take a minute and I'm going to take off those screws. Now that I have that clicking mechanism off, I'm going to put the aperture ring back on. And then you can see if you just take that mechanism off, it's very free flowing. And then this is not exactly what we want because we want it to be very smooth, a very smooth action. And to do that, we use grease. Taking this whole assembly apart and then moving things around, you can hear some scratching and stuff. So that's some dirt and debris that was just knocked loose when taking apart the lens. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make sure that we have a clean surface when we put this back together. So first I'm gonna blow it and then I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and just wipe around where the aperture ring has in contact with the lens. Next thing I'm going to do is just do the same thing with the internals from the uh, aperture ring as well. And then I'm going to use the super secret grease or any really recommended lens grease will work. Uh, you want to be generous with the amount of grease you use, but you don't want to be have too much or it's overflowing everywhere and then you get grease inside the internals. So I'm putting a healthy amount, but just not too much. Okay, I'm just gonna put that aside. And before I put it even back on the lens or near the lens, I'm gonna wipe off some of that excess that kind of got away from me when I was putting it on. So I'm just taking a different cloth and doing that. And as we spin the aperture, it's not actually moving anything. Like the aperture blades, you can see that it's very, so as you can see that, yeah, the aperture ring is on, but it's not fully seated. Uh, that's because of the mechanism inside. So like I said at the beginning, is just make sure that you pay attention on how the lens goes back together in terms of how the aperture actually works in combination with the lens and the aperture ring. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the screwdriver and I'm gonna place this forward and then seat the aperture ring. And now we can see that that pin now freely interacts with the aperture ring. And then we have a smooth close and open of the aperture. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the bayonet mount back on. And then there's only really one plate, place to do this. Bayonet mount has that little opening there and that's for the aperture lever, which is right here. So next, I'm gonna put that on. And also I'm gonna be conscious of the whole lineup too. And there we go. So before I do anything, I'm just gonna make sure all the holes line up where they are. And then if I press down and then actuate the aperture, that everything works. And then also it's good to look at the side markings that everything lines up, but it's kind of foolproof because you only can put the aperture ring in one way. 
All right, so next thing to do is actually convert this to EF. So I'm gonna take the first part of the kit, which is this spacer, and I'm gonna place that down, and that simply just goes over the lens like that. Next thing I'm gonna do is open the secondary packet, and then this actually has the EF converter ring, and then it has a bunch of hardware. And the first thing I'm gonna do is line up the holes and put these screws in and tighten those down. So these are just extra long versions of the original screws that were in the lens. So I'm not gonna fully tighten that down yet. I'm gonna put them all in and then do that. Uh, these, the screw got, screwdriver gave you two, it also has a magnetic tip, but these are stainless steel screws. So these ones won't stick, but they're big enough that you can kind of mess your way into it. And there, now that I have my third one down, I'm gonna tighten that, just finger tight, not being too tight. And there we go. So because you can put the EF mount kind of in any direction and or any orientation, what I mean by that is that you can kind of, if you put it on incorrectly, or not necessarily incorrectly, but in a weird orientation, that when you rotate and lock the lens that you might not be able to see the actual markings on the lens. So what I did is I kind of fooled around with the first lens and then when I rotate it and lock it and pretend this is like you're looking at the side view and this is just in purpose in purpose for an AC when they look directly look at the camera, they can see on the side what the markings are of the camera. That you can see that the aperture is at F2 and then that you can actuate that with those markings and then you can also see your focal distance. But that being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to open this lens fully and open this lens fully and then I'm gonna kinda line up these bayonets on the side. You can use any marking on the lens that you see fit. And now I'm just going to line up the orange dot on the side with this orange dot on the side there and generally look for where the screw holes line up at that point. And then what I'm going to do is now with that in place, I'm gonna take the other screws and luckily enough, these ones are magnetic and they are very small. So I can just put that in the first one. Now it's very important that you don't over tighten these or you'll strip the thread on the adapter ring. So I'm just gonna put one in, put the second in, last one right there. And then that is it. You have a nice SLR vintage lens that is fully declicked and cine modded with an EF adapter. Now, I, like I said, I'm not a lens technician, I'm a cinematographer, but I've used a lot of cinema lenses and it just gets really expensive to rent them out for a lot of productions. So I thought it was a really good investment to get my own set that I could rent out for productions as well as use on my own personal projects. If you enjoyed the video, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in content like this, subscribe and follow for more.